right to it then. You know, uh, Pressure, the new album, is coming out later this week, actually. So I understand uh, some of the album was uh, written before the whole pandemic started and some of it was like after. So what kind of album are we talking about here as a whole? Well, um, you know, it's definitely, it's not, it wasn't intended to have a theme. Um, but, you know, as, as 2020 started unraveling, um, you know, we, we were certainly feeling the pressure of that. We were feeling the weight of that. But we, we called the album Pressure because we feel like pressure is something that humans have been feeling since the beginning of time, you know, in some way, shape or form. You know, so that's why a song like that, that, that feels appropriate to sing now, um, you know, even though it was written before this, it felt appropriate to put on this album, you know. So, I mean, there were there were a couple of songs like Holding My Breath. I mean, it, it's when I listen to that song now, it sounds like we were we were writing it about the pandemic. You know, it's like, I don't know if we had a crystal ball and just rubbed it the right way or what, um, but, you know, it's, I think all in all, it's a hopeful record. It starts off, it starts off pretty heavy and pretty aggressive, kind of like this year did. And then we just, it, this record is our way of trying to make something beautiful out of a bad situation. Yeah, yeah. How was it to kind of somehow put those songs together, you know, pre-pandemic and post pandemic written songs was it easy or um i just i love i love writing songs i like hanging out with my friends and making music and so you know some songs are, are easier to write than others but um you know like for example holding my breath that song started graham sent me a, a text message with a guitar riff and a drum groove and was like i'm working on this so then i sat down and started coming up with a chorus and some words and the next thing you know we had a song and then like a lot of songs that we write it just kind of got shoved under the bed and we forgot about it and then as we were picking the songs for this record we had 40 or you know I think 37 to be exact songs written for this record and recorded and then um Graham was like hey what about this song holding my breath and then Caleb was like what about that song pressure and so we started uncovering more songs that felt like they were perfect for, you know, the thing that we're all going through together. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, it, there was no rhyme or reason. It was just trying to stay creative. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, despite everything, uh, you are doing a release show and, uh, how did this idea come to be and, uh, how will it actually work? Um, well, we, we, uh, couldn't stand the, the thought of not playing these songs live. You know, even if we were just going to be playing them in a room by ourselves with a couple of cameras, um, we 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 are like fish out of water when we can't play shows. That's what we're designed to do. We're wired to perform, and uh, we just thought, okay, we haven't we haven't done a full band show yet. Let's let's go big on this one. So we pretty much we rented a space. We brought in lights. We brought in all the sound equipment. We recorded it. We had a camera crew come. And pretty much built our own venue slash production team to put, put this together. And I did all of the video editing. It took forever to do, but it's, I mean, cause it's over an hour of music. Um, and we found a platform that, that has a live chat. So we're actually going to be able to hang out with our fans while the show is broadcasting. We're doing a European broadcast, an American broadcast, and then it'll be available for 48, 48 hours for people to view. So I think it's, I think it's the, we did the best that we could with the situation that we're in, you know? Yeah. Yeah. seems like you, or we have to learn to do everything in a new way at the moment. So how was this uh, recording process, you know, recording album in quarantine? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the record was, was very much, we took a, a DIY approach with that as well. It was recorded in my home studio, which was incredibly inspiring. Um, even even the obstacles that we faced along the way kind of made us think a little differently. You know, you you come up on a pothole in the road and you have to figure out how to go around it to get to the destination, you know. Not getting to the destination is not an option. So we just had to think creatively and kind of break a few of the rules and break a few of our own ideas about how things are supposed to work, you know. And uh, once we did that and accepted the fact that, hey, we're making a record and my basement then it became really almost empowering 
because then once we adopted the the mentality of let's bring our fans into our creative space and instead of trying to sound larger than life let's try to sound like life you know so that was sort of the i don't know the thing that was driving the process yeah it actually sounds pretty amazing like you said you edited the uh the gig yourself uh the 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 record publishing gig and then you uh recorded the album in a base in your basement or wrote the album in your basement so how big of a like change was that from like your previous recording sessions or recording albums the truth and lies record was done in in one of the you know the greatest studios i've ever set foot in in brooklyn it's the studio studio g and uh it's it's incredibly different because if something goes wrong in a studio like that there's 10 people who can fix it you know if a piece of gear goes down there's a tech there who can fix it and get it get it going and whenever something happens if you're recording at home then it's like you know i mean one of one one thing i'm remembering is like Caleb and i had a huge fight over i th- that we couldn't get the headphones to work one day it was like they were working fine one minute and then you turn around and something's not working right and you know stuff like that but i think it almost did end up fueling the process because you're you're kind of getting um a sense of urgency from the pressure of it you know and that comes across in the playing okay uh i have talked with uh, very different bands and gotten uh, very different answers but how do you think this pandemic will change music industry as a whole um you know it's it's interesting because i i've i've heard mixed things from different artists i know there are a lot of artists that are trying to not release music right now trying to withhold until things get back to normal and I don't really know if anyone knows the answer to that. You know, I I know a lot of people from the booking agencies have been let go. A lot of the venues are going through a hard time. Um Lord knows that the crew members who actually are the ones responsible for making sure shows happen are are experiencing a lot of hard hard times. Um So I'll be I'll be curious to see, you know, who comes out on the other end. I think a lot of a lot of bands who aren't willing to get their hands dirty and kind of get under the hood and, and um you know figure out ways to make things happen regardless of the situation or the circumstances you know it'll be curious to see who who makes it out of this in one yeah. piece yeah yeah uh, like you said some uh, bands are like holding up with the record so uh, what kind of experience is this now for you releasing uh, new music in this kind of time Well I mean I don't blame I don't blame bands for for holding off on putting out records you know I mean this this record was our response to this year and it was we we had to make this and put it out because we we wanted to um we wanted to use one like Noah Denny left the band in February so that cut, we were thrown off balance a little bit and so we we had initially planned to re-release Truth and Lies this year with unreleased songs but then we we figured rather than re-release something we needed to reinvent ourselves a little bit and try and just keep going and find our footing for ourselves um but also give give our fans who have stuck with us for so long something to sink their teeth into to get us through this together um and i think that we we're, we're in a unique position because we have been honing the tools of recording of doing our own videos, doing our own stuff, you know, we we can do the job of a record label pretty much on our own. And a lot of bands don't have that luxury, you know? And so we rather than withhold this record, we'll just we'll make another record. You know, we we constantly write music, we're just going to keep going because I think that's one of the things that rock and roll does is it perseveres. It's like we and i during this time i can't tell you how many times i've wanted to just turn the news off and have and turn on rock and roll you know and kind of just get lost in that for a moment and that's sort of what this record serves as for me and i hope that it can do that for our fans too 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's steer a bit away from COVID and all that. Uh, let's talk a bit about Nashville, if you will. You know, uh, you moved there in, at the tender age of 17. And uh, looking from point of view of Finland, the music city seems almost like a mystical place. So how much has Nashville affected you as an artist? Oh, man. Well, I mean, I'm from a town of 1700 people. I'm from a tiny little town. And so when I when I moved to Nashville, sorry, let me close this. But people people when people call during the Zoom meetings, it just throws everything off. When I moved to Nashville, um, it was it was overwhelming because I wasn't used to living in a city that had a grocery store in it, you know, like, like things as simple as that. Um, so my entire life got shaken up. And then all of a sudden, I was living next to uh, my my next door neighbor when I moved to town was Jaron Johnston of that band, the Cadillac three, who's a killer band. And we became songwriting buddies. And I wasn't, I was from a town where I couldn't find people to play with. And so all of a sudden I have musicians all around me. So it was like, um, a heavy dose of inspiration for sure. 